Ah, there you are. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. Today we'll talk about story structure in Dungeons and Dragons. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm your host, Professor Dungeon Master, coming to you from Dungeon University, wearing my plus one tweed jacket. And today we're going to be talking about how to design adventures using traditional three-act story structure. In case you've forgotten it from high school, a traditional story has three acts. The first part is called the setup, the second part is the conflict, and the third is the resolution. In the setup, the setting, the characters, the background, and the motivations are introduced. The conflict is a series of escalating encounters where the protagonist has to overcome a number of obstacles. The resolution is when the antagonist and protagonist finally meet and all the conflicts are resolved. So for example, in The Hobbit, the setting is Middle Earth and we learn about the Shire and the Hobbit holes. We meet the dwarfs and Gandalf. We hear the story of the dragon and we learn the goal to get the dragon's gold. The conflict are the things that Bilbo has to overcome on the way such as the trolls, the spiders, the goblins, and the riddles with Gollum. The resolution is when Bilbo finds the dragon's missing scale and conveys that information to Bard, who then kills the dragon. So in a role-playing game, it works like this. The setup is when the characters go to town and they learn about the background of the town, if it's a new place, they meet any significant NPCs, and they find out what they have to do and why they have to do it. That should take you around 20 minutes. The conflict is a series of escalating encounters. It's not necessarily combat encounters. It could be puzzles or riddles or traps. And the resolution is when the characters come face to face with that big baddie at the end. Human beings naturally love stories. When you use this story structure, your players will have a more satisfying time. Also, as a dungeon master, it stops you from thinking as the dungeon as just a bunch of rooms with monsters and treasure in it, like a zoo where the players kill the animals. All right, so let's go to the table and I'll show you how I design Adventures for Story Structure using minis and models, and if you'd like, you can use this adventure for yourself. The scenario begins with the characters traveling down the road, and up ahead they see a coach. The coach is under attack by bandits who are attacking from either side. They're attacking the coach with arrow fire, and they're also trying to drag out the passengers. At this point, I'll ask the players what they do, and if they're heroic, they're going to move forward and engage the bandits. No long exposition or me explaining what the background of the adventure is, it just begins suddenly with a combat. When the players arrive, the bandits are just finishing up, so they're actually dragging their prisoners away. Having already gotten what they came for, the bandits are now in the process of withdrawing, so they're not going to get into a long drawn out confrontation with the player characters. If they take any wounds at all, they're going to turn and run as fast as they can. As the players struggle with the bandits, you should describe all the arrows whizzing by, narrowly missing them. You don't actually have to roll for them. You just want to make it seem as if the players are in a life or death situation. Make it clear that the players can't see all the archers from the woods and that they're laying down cover fire so that those bandits attacking on foot can retreat. Discourage the players from following the bandits at exactly that point. Point out that they're wearing camouflage and that the players are unfamiliar with the area and at a distinct disadvantage. The first victim that the players are going to find is a well-dressed merchant with an arrow in his shoulder. Asking for the breath, the merchant says that bandits have kidnapped his daughter Rowena and stolen her dowry. He was transporting his daughter to her groom and her new home when they came under attack. He begs the players to rescue and return his daughter safely, for which he will give them part of the dowry. 10 or 15 minutes into the adventure, the players have two objectives, rescue Rowena and recover the dowry. Several of the merchant's retinue of men have been injured or killed. A quick search reveals that the shafts and the feathers on the arrows are black. Any ranger or rogue will recognize that as the calling card of the Black Arrow Gang, a notorious band of brigands. Black Arrow Gang are based in this forest, and there are bounties for each gang member, as well as their leader, Black Angus. The DM can decide on appropriate bounties, but the point is that the players have a third objective now, capture or kill as many bandits as possible. A faint trail leads into the woods and the player characters can follow it, but time is of the essence because the skies look like rain, it's beginning to drizzle, and nightfall is fast approaching. None of the merchant's bodyguards are going to be able to assist. Many of them have been wounded or killed in the attack. The remaining retainers need to get themselves and the merchant to a physician before nightfall. So the characters are on their own. 
This would be about the 20 minute mark in the adventure, and the setup is now complete. We have the setting, the forest, we know the villain, Black Angus and the Black Arrow Gang. We know the background of the merchant and the gang. And the players have three objectives, return the merchant's daughter, return the dowry, and round up as many bandits as possible. The rain adds the element of time. If you want to add tension to the adventure and create narrative drive, you want to have a time limit, which will create a sense of urgency for the players. So the conflict begins as the characters attempt to track the bandits through the forest. Make it seem as if the tracking is difficult, with the characters finding the trail and then losing it again and having to stop several times, but make the roles on behalf of the player characters behind your dungeon master screen. Make a lot of roles with a lot of dramatic pauses. Make it seem as if they might lose the trail, even though you're rigging it so that they'll find it. You never want the plot of your adventure hanging on one search or track roll. Just when the players think that they've lost the trail, have one of them find a silk scarf on a tree branch. The scarf is perfumed and has Rowena's initials on it. So the players will know that they're on the right track and they're getting closer to their ultimate objective. At nightfall, they finally track their way to the bandit's roost. It's a series of crumbling guard towers connected by narrow footbridges. The only visible entrance is that door on the left hand side at the top of the stairs and it is thoroughly barred from within. How exactly they're going to gain entrance is the next part of the conflict. A rogue or ranger might attempt to climb one of those trees up to that footbridge. The guards in this room are busy drinking and playing cards celebrating the ill-gotten gain, so they've left the door open, making it possible for a rogue to sneak around and unbolt the door. If the players stake out the lair for several hours, they're going to discover that every three hours a different two bandits will leave the lair as another two return after patrolling the forest. When the patrol returns, they're going to perform a secret knock, which is changed daily. So if the players overhear the knock, they can use it to gain entrance. There are probably a dozen ways I haven't thought of for the players to sneak into the fortress. Changing their shape, potions of diminution or gaseous form. The point is that the door is part of the conflict. A conflict doesn't have to just be monsters, it might be an inanimate object. To defeat these brigands, the player characters are going to have to sneak across this bridge. The characters will have to do it stealthily, trying not to attract attention. There are no bandits in this tower. This is where prisoners are kept. Rowena isn't here, but her handmaid is, and she'll beg the player characters to help find her mistress. She doesn't know where Rowena is, only that Black Angus has taken her to his tower. Also, the rest of the bandits are going to be found in the next room, where they're celebrating their victory. This is what's known as rising action, as the players get closer and closer to the final confrontation. This is the exposed courtyard where the bandits spend most of their time. They're currently celebrating their victory, and you can see they're counting their gold and enjoying some roast rabbit. The bandits aren't expecting an attack, so the players will gain the advantage of surprise. I deliberately designed this room with a lot of interesting features. The fighter could jump down on those barrels and onto the table. In the fireplace is a flaming rabbit on a spit that can be used as a weapon. If one of the players don't use it, one of the bandits will. Either this barrel or these kegs might contain black powder, which combined with the fireplace or a flame arrow spell can have potentially explosive consequences. This figure in the corner is a hostage tied to a chair which will raise the tension level of the whole scene. Once all of the characters are engaged in combat, that's when Black Angus is going to make his appearance. He emerges from the door at the top of the stairs, fires his crossbow at a character who's already engaged, and then just as quickly disappears back into his room before they can get a shot at him. Now the characters know that he's close, they're making progress, and because he escapes, the players are really going to hate him because players hate an elusive villain. At least some of the players will race to the top of the stairs, kick open the door, and finally confront Black Angus. This is where the resolution begins. The fighter rushes forward to engage Black Angus. Rowena rushes behind the player characters for protection. And once they're engaged with Black Angus, Rowena makes her move and stabs one of the characters in the back. It turns out the two were colluding all along. They met at a town fair over a year ago and fell in love. Rowena hates her fiancé and hates her father for arranging the marriage to him. Not only does she plan to steal the dowry and run away with Angus, she plans to ransom herself off back to her father for even more money. At that precise moment, a scouting party of brigands returns and attempts to sneak up on the characters from behind. If the fight goes against Black Angus, he will make a daring leap out the window and into the river below. 
perhaps returning on another occasion to plague the player characters as a recurring villain. Rowena, meanwhile, will strike at the most vulnerable character from behind with her envenomed blade. You might need to remind the player characters that they only get the reward if they return Rowena unharmed. If she is returned safely to her father, he will pay the reward and will defend her, saying that she was obviously brainwashed by Black Angus and his gang. And like Black Angus, perhaps Rowena will one day return to pester the player characters. At the most inopportune time, of course. The demented love story between Black Angus and Rowena is a good example of a villain having a strong motivation. Rowena and Angus want something. A villain shouldn't just be a monster sitting on a pile of treasure at the last room of the dungeon, counting it and waiting to be killed. They have an objective, and when the objectives of the villain and the player character come into conflict, well that's when you get conflict. And that's when you get great adventures. So when you design adventures, think in terms of that three-act structure, setup, conflict, and resolution. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. For more great Dungeon Crab videos, subscribe. If you actually run this adventure, tell me about how it went in the comments below. I'd love to see how Angus and Rowena ended up in your game. This is Professor Dungeon Master for Dungeon Craft. Thanks for watching. I'll see you at the table. May all your future roles be 20.